and gentlemen, it is me, it is me, Mr. EMP for I Make Plays TV. What you get is what you see, yada, yada, so on and so forth. We are very excited, so we're just going to go ahead and get right into it today because we have a very special guest on the channel today, a good friend of mine. Everybody, I introduce you to Evo Alpha. Evo, introduce yourself to the people. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? I'm Evo Alpha. Play a little bit of everything. Uh, Yeah. Chill guy. I uh, appreciate you. I appreciate you having me here so, so much. Thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, you know, I was going ahead and looking for dope content creators to go ahead and link with for It Takes Two. I, I didn't know anything about the game, right? I just knew that it was a multiplayer game co-op. It was just for two people. So I was like, okay, well, let me find somebody that'd be cool running through this game with. I picked the game up, contacted my boy Evo Alpha. We pushed through it. It is way longer than I expected, but we pushed through it. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, post game. We finished it up not too long ago and we're getting ready to review it. Share our thoughts, what we felt about the game, uh, because I don't know about you, Evo, but that game made me feel things, man. What you what you think? It did. I can't, I can't, can't even cap, man. It honestly did. It wasn't Story always good things either. I'm going I'm to man. Man. say that right now. <laughs> I'm going to say that right Definitely now. Definitely um, so the way that we've gone ahead and we've structured this review, right? We're going to break it down into three sections. Uh, sure. There won't be a final score. It'll just be a recommend or do I not recommend. Uh, but it is broken down into three sections. Those sections are the story, sure. the gameplay, and the presentation of, of, of everything as a whole, right? Uh, so we're going to start with the story and, and what that gave us. Now, in my opinion, right, the story of It Takes Two is its weakest part. I know you're thinking, being that it's a, a, a you know, campaign game, a story game, right. how is it still a, a very good game? Um, I think that It Takes Two story struggles in some areas uh, about trying to initially make us feel, right? Um, it tries to jump right into the the action and what's happening with arguments between the parents but at the beginning they don't give us much information in regards yeah. to the parents so they're kind of just bickering and arguing and they say they want a divorce right we feel bad for the kids of course but we have no attachments to these parents so in a divorce right both both parties are feeling some type of way we're locked out of that and so yeah the whole a lot of time as part of this this story for it takes two i just felt like uh i i just felt like i didn't know if i was supposed to be rooting for these people or not um what did you think of how how they jumped right into the game and the story itself i can definitely agree with that it it felt like um starting the game they tried to throw us this entire environment and no time flat like they really want us to feel oh bad for the relationship bad for the child in the relationship without us really getting to know these people or getting to know say what happened what initiated this what or just any are with each other yeah what the, yeah what their issues are uh they tried to make us connect and feel bad for them without giving us who they really were so i could i definitely agree with that it it's how so, can I say it? it uh, I, I see why they did it, right? Um mm -hmm. you want to jump right into it and they had they have a pretty long game here. There's right. a lot of game here for it to be a non full price game, right? Uh mm -hmm. um I'm thinking twelve to fifteen hours of co op game here that is all quality and they're telling a story throughout, right? So right. my thought process is that they started the game thinking that they're gonna throw these issues at the wall and eventually as we play through hours and hours of the game and with these characters we're going to come to know them we're going to realize what these characters flaws are and what they see each other's flaws as right uh and we'll come out stronger for it right so in a sense the audience is almost divorced from the situation and as we go through the game we start to see why we want to be close to these characters 
Right. But initially, and throughout most of the game, uh, because they don't, for me, feel like they start getting their redemption until the latter half, because it's such a long game, there's just so much time with these characters. And I'm going to be honest, Evo, I didn't feel like they were the most likable people. Yeah, I didn't feel very connected to them. Like when you have a story that has positive characters or even characters that you can relate to, you kind of initially feel that in, I want to say the, honestly, the beginning of the story, like you're a, a good story driven game will give you reasoning of why you can connect with these characters but that's where to me it takes too lacked it tried to give us a whole lot in a little bit of time and if that their goal was to have us to relate to these characters or have us to even feel bad for the characters it they definitely missed the mark to me on on that front right right and and i can definitely uh uh, relate with that right um, and you can tell that that's the mark that they were going for uh, that's exactly what they were going for and that's what happened they did it of course miss the, the mark there um, but they, they hit the mark on, on other areas right oh, Yeah. Um, as you go through the game you start you really do start to understand what these characters issues are with each other right mm -hmm. as you go through the game you start to realize oh okay uh the mother is fairly demanding, right? Uh, you realize that perhaps the father doesn't stand up for himself the way that he should or needs to, right? Uh, he doesn't communicate the greatest. Uh, the mother is gone for long hours, this, that, and the third. All of these things that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the father is not necessarily the most realistic person. Um, right. All of these things they they do eventually get to showing you right as the game progresses they do eventually get to showing you all of these things but unfortunately by the time they get to showing you these things is it too little too late right um, um and and the reason being is because as i said there's so there's so long of them being terrible so much of them being terrible human beings right uh and the things around them being hurt because they are terrible human beings. Um, we we know about the beetle, right? Uh, the beetle, right. man, the beetle. The beetle yeah. helped you out. Oh man, the beetle. We really we love the beetle. We yeah. love the beetle. He really helped you out, and he did not get what he deserved. He deserved all all of what we promised him, uh, and he got nothing but pain and suffering. Absolutely. And then, on top of pain and suffering, if we're going to talk about pain and suffering, Evo, oh, oh you know what I'm about God. to bring up. Yeah. Oh, shh. Oh, Damn. the cutie yeah. is in. Damn. It's a, it's a vivid image that I forever, that oh, will forever stay with me. Oh, the cutie but. incident. Never have I played a video game and been forced to do something that physically made me sick like that now i know what you're thinking as y'all are watching this y'all are like yo you you you're a gamer you've played modern warfare 2 no russian right you remember no russian that was terrible <laughs> that was right oh god just terrible dark, dark moment in gaming history of course you're a gamer you remember grand theft auto 5 where trevor tortured that man right yeah. you, you remember that we're all gamers we remember that but that None of that. that compared to the cutie incident for me. It's, it's something about that cutie incident that just will forever stay with me. Like, I can, you have to remind me about that Trevor incident in GTA, but that right. cutie right. incident, that's sticking. That's and, that's not going anywhere for a long time. And And I think part of that is because you expect those sort of terrible things to happen and those sort of atrocities to happen in those other games. Of Not course. only that, but those other games are so uh they're so fantastic, right? I, I know for a fact that I'm not a Russian soldier uh in a war, right? That's such a, a crazy, crazy idea, but I could very much be somebody with relationship problems. Right. I could very much be somebody with relationship problems. So when you take 
take you know a game and and you sort of tie it a little bit to reality, right? And then you ask me to hurt something so incredibly innocent. Innocent. Yeah. It's it it definitely sticks by you, right? Um mm-hmm. and there were moments that stuck by you in the story. So like the story is it it can definitely be effective. Um and there are moments that are incredibly powerful, but overall the way that it was handled, I don't necessarily feel as though it was the the best for uh it it was the best that it could have been handled overall. Yeah. I do feel like they might have been able to handle that uh handle the story a bit better, uh bring us into it a bit more, right? Bring us to a different um, climax. Bring us to a climax in a different way. In a, in a different way than than what we did have, right? Yeah. Um though that is not to disparage at all what we did have. Um, mm-hmm. because it was it was a serviceable story. There are games where the stories are are incoherent. I say that this was the weakest part of It Takes Two, but that is because the other parts were so great, right? So yeah. the next part, uh, the next thing that I want to speak about in regards to the game here, Evo, is the gameplay, right? Can you let me know a little bit about what you felt about the gameplay here? Gameplay, I felt, uh, I felt remnants of your traditional platformer, right? But with its own originality, there was originality in the the. I, I guess I, I guess we can call them. I, I don't want to call them mess, but there were original originality in every section of the game. Level, maybe every level, level yeah, for every a platformer, level. right? Levels is appropriate. Yeah, for yeah, for platformer levels. It was originality in everything from where we were at to how the area was to what we were using to get through the area. Nothing felt like we did it before and nothing felt like I've done this before in a similar game. Right, which is very interesting because one of the things that I noted is that it takes two for its gameplay is taking a bunch of inspiration from all these other genres, but they do it in such a way that it distinctly feels like it takes two, right? Like, exactly, like it, exactly. even, even if, you know, you, you play a section of, uh, that, that you're fighting a squirrel, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's a fighting game. Uh, it still has these old school arcadey fight stick feel that feels authentic it doesn't feel like you're playing uh a fighting game in a, it takes two it feels like it takes two in that moment is right. a fighting game and right. you can say so for the flight in the game the vehicle sections in the game right and even the mm-hmm. underwater section where normally underwater sections in video games are just atrocious it takes two made the gameplay of the underwater section feel as so though smooth. a whole game could st- could stay there. Exactly, so smooth. It felt like it. It felt like the whole game itself that that underwater section specifically. It felt like that entire section. If they wanted it to be an underwater game, that they definitely had the means to. They definitely had the means to create a entire world that if they wanted if that game wanted to be something else and be completely underwater that it could i remember um i remember you saying when we were playing um a certain level uh in the game um i want to say it was the hammer and nail section that it kind of felt like um like captain america when he throws his shield and, and calls it back when i had the uh the husband section uh with yes. one of the things the that he nail. was doing that definitely reminded me it definitely reminded me of that but it's still had its own identity had its own identity in it and that was something that i absolutely like i'll i have to give it takes to its props on that like you can compare it to something that you might have played or something that you might have seen but it's its own style it definitely takes elements from different genres of culture of pop culture whether it be from 
comics or uh, any any other games that we may see, but definitely identifies it as this is something that we have done. We didn't pull this from another game completely, but this is something that we put into our game and fine tuned. And I love some, the way that you put that fine tuned. Yeah, fine tuned and definitely some made something that the person playing this game will love not only like love but will be able to remember that's right. that's another thing that i absolutely love that i could honestly like reflect back and say nothing no section that we played felt like something we did before exactly exactly they kept things very fresh right and i do want to move mm -hmm. over to things being fresh right as part of this game uh gameplay section but i want to go ahead and i want to archive something that you said i want to put it in the back pocket they have the means to do these things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna talk about that in a bit because the way that that has come about is a bit surprising uh, if you're familiar with the games industry. So we'll talk about that here in just a bit. Uh, but as he was saying, nothing you did before felt like the last thing that you did. Everything feels very fresh, as I would put it, right? And that's because mm -hmm. the game is continuously throwing new mechanics at you to make it feel fresh. Evo recently mentioned the hammer and the nail mechanics, right? Uh, but there's far more than that. Of course, there's the underwater mechanics, but then you have things like uh, flight, right? Uh, oh, wow. uh, teleportation. Um, uh, rewinding time. You uh, have time travel. Uh, right. Uh, size manipulation. Um, it. it is continuously finding ways to change up what you've known about the game from maybe even an hour before that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're thinking this is the way that this entire game is going to be when you first start playing the game. And as you continue to go, you start to realize, no, this game keeps changing. And that is how this game is going to be. This game is not going to allow you to say, I'm comfortable with this mechanic. I know how this works, and I'm going to become a master of that and use that the entire game. No, you get this item, you work around it, you work with it, you work with your partner for about maybe an hour, an hour and a half, two hours max. Then they move you on to the next thing, and you have to sort of relearn right, what you guys are capable of doing as a pair. And exactly. I, I very much appreciate that, right? Because it all comes down to continuously getting to know what your partner is able to do. You don't get stagnant, right? And they're, of course, yeah. trying to teach a lesson there, right? Uh, themes are very important. Uh, and so they're trying to, what they're trying to say is, in a relationship, you can't get stagnant, right? In a relationship, you have to continuously feel out your partner. You have to continuously learn what they are uh, uh, becoming, right? Who they are becoming. You have to learn how to live with that and adjust. Um, and I think that they've gone ahead and they've exemplified that amazingly through the gameplay. Absolutely. Uh, with the way that everything switches around. Now, I want to talk in regards to how the puzzles themselves were extremely clever, but never too hard especially if you're approaching it with two players, right? There were times where we would run around and we'd say, what is the next course of action? How do we how do we do this, right? But it was always something that was fairly simple right in front of us. And if I didn't know it, the beauty of it is that you did, Eva. Um, exactly. The game really encourages teamwork in that manner. What did you think about the puzzles that they had you figure out? I'm sorry. I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. They definitely encourage teamwork, but uh, like, like how you were saying, like if I didn't know it, uh, you did, and vice versa. The game did very well when it came to its puzzles. In those moments of, yeah, these are moments that the entire game is something that you're working together with with the person that you're playing it with. But the game does an awesome job at letting each other, letting each player take the lead. And I absolutely, that was another thing that I absolutely like loved. I noted that with this game, like it, it was moments where 
uncon like I didn't know, okay, what's the next step? And of course you you would take the lead. Somehow it would just like come to you or somehow it would just like come to me and then one of us would just be like, okay. Inter right here, yeah. yeah go ahead. Part of the reason why I think that that happens is because the game is very good about what it shows each player on the side, right? So it's like the game is, is a split screen, right? Um, yep. As a player, uh, when you're playing one of these characters, you have a, a inclination to look at one side, look at your side of the game. But what I've noticed that It Takes Two is good with is whatever side is the side that currently has to move forward, right? Whoever the onus is on to figure out that puzzle generally, mm -hmm. it'll show them what they need to see, right? So if yeah. I don't have the right viewpoint to figure out what we need to do, but you're a little ahead of me in the level and you can look from around a certain corner that I can't see and see that such and such needs to be done, okay, now we can move forward and all I have to do is just trust in you. Right. right. Um, again, this is all a, a you know, a, a, a giant metaphor for what it means to be in a relationship and I very much appreciate how they mix that in with the gameplay. Um, speaking of mixed in with the gameplay, Welcome Distractions, the mini game, right? The the PvP elements of this game, mm -hmm. the only PvP elements of this game. What did you think? Definitely, definitely. Um, I, I guess I could call it like a um, like a brain, like a brain easer after uh, a certain level in the Palette game. Palette cleanser. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, like a nice pilot cleanser, especially when it came to like. A section that was very intense or just very just brain scratching that it was just a nice palate cleanser something simple that was just like it it, it brought out that competitiveness that it was just something to just cleanse that palate of that difficult moment prior so that was definitely appreciated right right i really enjoyed them and they always kept you guessing on what you were going to get, right? Every now and again, you get one that's testing your aim. Uh, you might get one that tests, you know, your uh, ability to do a obstacle course, right? But then they had my absolute favorite one. And this is not one that I expected them to have or even to be my favorite. Do you remember when they just dropped chess in front of us? Yeah. They just yeah. dropped chess in front of us and... We were like, no, there has to be some sort of like uh, some good. sort of trick here, right? It can't, right. you can't just have yeah. drop chess on us. You don't just want us to play chess. No, no. They wanted us to play chess. They just wanted us to play chess. And what did we do? We sat our asses there for about ten minutes and played Dude. chess. Chess. <laughs> In the middle of the game, especially. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Toward the end of the game, we were coming up toward mm -hmm. the finale. And they said, hey, stop what you're doing, everything that you're doing, and play chess. And we actually sat there and did it because those, those palate cleansers are, are super duper necessary, especially when you get into some of the, uh, when you start finishing some of the more hectic boss fights that they have. And there are some really good, really memorable boss fights in here. Um, one of my favorites, uh, I'll have to just shout out, the toolbox was extremely memorable. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed toolbox. the toolbox. Really awesome. Especially, really especially the the mother's moment, like those slow motion moments. Oh man, that was just so clean to me. Oh, that was man. absolutely clean. Uh, how about how about the giant bee? Giant bee was another good one. Giant bee was absolutely giant bee another, was another good, good one. one. And the movement around the bee is what really made that boss fight for me. Yeah, movement around the bee. Uh, getting back to the plat, getting back to the uh, front platform where we had to dodge some other obstacles but that movement and the like that entire movement the the lead up to finally getting past it that was even that was even crazy right um i, I want to say one of my favorite parts was toward and um i, I don't want to say was it toward the end like the ice section the snow section yeah i want to say yep right around there yeah it was toward it was toward the end one of the things i did appreciate that uh it takes two does is just that there is a mission there is a goal but it does such an awesome job of introducing you to these different 
levels and it makes you just want to explore i, right. I remember it specifically in there it was just moments where we, when we were introduced to the whole uh ice skating uh thing that we were just literally going around that entire map messing with uh the the civilians or uh whatever you could call them in that map going around ice skating even us even a part of that uh same level where you could pick up a that. snowball and have a whole snowball fight to me that was just like a really fun like not even not even like uh the like uh like the little side the pvp moments but it was just fun to explore those sections yes oh my god the snow section was absolutely beautiful yeah. The game will will most definitely uh, put you in situations and places where you're gonna find it hard to move forward and, and, and chase what the end goal of the game really is, right? right. Um, and the reason being is because of the third thing that I wanted to talk about here. And this is the thing that I feel like it takes to really knocks out of the park, right? The presentation. All right, yeah. so yeah. this is an indie title, right? Uh, from what I understand, the studio is called Haze Light. Mm -hmm. uh, Haze Light Studio and the publisher, right? And this is why we were talking about the means earlier, is Electronic Arts. EA, ladies and gentlemen, if you know anything about gaming, you know that normally those letters spell doom. Right, I know right. Doom is normally spelled D O O M, but in gaming, it can be spelled E A. <laughs> now, look, I, I, I personally, at some point, do want that E A game changers look. Right, I do right. feel like I, you know, have a place and, and value to that company if that at some point they ever want to come through and, and check me out. But I have to call things a buck. I have to be honest. E A does not have the squeakiest not have the most squeaky clean track record when it comes to uh games companies uh relations with their customers and <laughs> keeping you know studios alive right here ea has a winner and they've funded it as such you can tell uh if this is an indie this is one of the most well-funded indies i've ever seen this is a beautiful, beautiful game that takes an appealing design and juxtaposes that design against a myriad of darker themes to leave a lasting impression on everybody that plays it, right? And it's crazy because they almost leave an impression with every single level. I mean, you're... Any, every time you go into a different area, your jaw will continuously drop. How many times, Evo, did we go to play It Takes Two and, and get to a different area and just go, wow. Wow. How much money did they put into this? At, like every, every section. I remember uh, go, toward the beginning, going through uh, the tree section, like looking at this entire section, looking at the details, looking at the, the colors between the beginning, the middle, the end, every section of this game, it felt like EA really took their time and put they 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 pockets in this game. They foot, and I was they pockets they, 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 they foot wallet. they pocket the the whole account. They just oh my God. it's like they just gave them the whole routing number and said go to town. And, and they did go and they to absolutely town. did. I think that part like we got 14 hours of game yeah. here and each thing that you see in the game is more breathtaking than the last I mean the music level right the music level just in a whole like one the music level the the cutscenes the the cinematics of that game the I, I again we have to go back to the character as a whole, yeah, we may not relate it to how they wanted to give us their their story, but I definitely would have to say that if this was a game, if this was a movie, it definitely could have. How can I say? It, it definitely could have 
been a little bit better as far as like getting people to relate or enjoy the characters but they put EA definitely put their money in this game looking feeling playing absolutely amazing and oh, I oh, have yeah, to absolutely that. looking feeling playing absolutely amazing but also uh sounding absolutely yes. amazing right yes. uh, the soundtrack for these game th this game was really great right but past the soundtrack when you get into things like w the noises that running across a map would make, uh, walking on top of things. Um, those, small, uh, those small details, of right, course. Or some of the abilities, the noises that they could make. Uh, it's just abs absolutely breathtaking, the game is, right? Uh, and even like, like you said, they were a little light on, on the story and how they chose to deliver the story, right? But for what they did give us, the voice acting, I felt like barring one character was was great. Now, we do need to talk about that one character, right? Uh because what was going on there? Uh Hakeem. Came the, the book. Dr. Hakeem, the the book, the dreaded book. Can we can we talk about Okay, so first of all, the voice acting was good if you're trying to be bad right yeah like what like I, when i was watching it right when we were playing uh it takes two mm -hmm. in the chat i got a million guesses as to what his ethnicity was he was some sort of spanish frenchman it, it felt but just... his name was arabic right his name like he sounded like Spanish, uh, Hispanic name was possibly Arabic, and but somehow had an accent, but spoke uh, perfect English. It, it felt was, like it, it was. It was very strange. Uh, he is a character that I can only describe as ethnic, right? Right, and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good right um right. if you wanted him to have some sort of identity you could have actually leaned into that because as it felt it felt like you had a i i don't know who the voice actor was right but it, you, i don't know what sort of accent that you were going for so it's hard for me to say what sort of voice actor you should have hired it just felt like whoever that voice actor was was doing a voice yeah, it, like it, it didn't it feel really like, like like it felt like if I decided to try to be like a, a dirty Frenchman, if I was no, 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 or right. whatever, it right? It felt but very do that. That's yeah, it felt very po like it felt possibly <sighs> it just didn't it didn't feel like the right representation yeah. or yeah, I, I, I know what you want to say, and you're like, I want to avoid that, but. Yeah, right. it does feel it a little like the that. We're gonna go with redacted. <laughs> right. It does redacted. feel a little that. Um yeah. and they could have avoided that somehow. Uh but besides that, the game has been absolutely amazing. So look, if we're just gonna go over everything here that we went over here today, uh the story, the gameplay, and the presentation, right? Uh right. story is definitely the weakest part, as we said. Um they did a lot of great things with the story uh, of course. but with how long it was and how unlikable the characters were there were memorable sections but it, the game itself did, and, and what they wanted in the game did not stick as well as it should have on top of that the the ending explains absolutely nothing what the fuck just happened as yeah far, as far as like and, life goes as far as that their life what just happened in in the last day actually because right, oh, man it's, it's just so much it's like so was the was this real is there mad like was this was a, this a real? dream for the girl this what? was this a dream for the girl was this a dream for the parents does this is just happen there... to other people right does this just happen in this universe like what, it's just what? this is just something that they should expect if they go through some kind of like trial or tribulation in their life there like, were a lot of questions raised from what they felt was a solution mm -hmm. right 
Um, and in some games uh, and in some properties where you're going to definitely be seeing sequels and things like that, it's better off. And, and even in some properties where you're not going to get anything, uh, anything more, you want to just leave them guessing. This doesn't seem like a leave them guessing situation, right? This doesn't seem like a, ooh, what happened? That's not a question that they're asking me at the end, right? They're just at the end expecting me to say, all right, this is Happily what happened. happened. This is or, fine. Right. right. Um, but I am asking these questions. I am not questioning the gameplay, however. The gameplay absolutely gameplay immaculate. Great. I loved it. I have no complaints for the gameplay whatsoever um i don't know that there's anything gameplay wise that they could have done better than they've implemented right, right here what do you think i want to say i think because we in because we played it and because it felt like we invested so much time and it, it kind of felt like we deserved an explanation toward the end that's that's how I, it, it kind of made me feel like we invested especially so much with time. the book especially with exactly. what the hell is hakeem like with the book with hakeem with their story with literally having to watch these parents like bicker for the good half to then maybe come to the like togetherness idea that oh we should we need to do this to get close to our daughter right it it, def it definitely felt like okay we need to know something y'all y'all just y'all just can't like leave us in this leave us hanging right right. I can definitely understand that. That was a little oof. But the gameplay and the presentation, uh, the presentation was just immaculate. That's where the game did, honestly, the best. That's where at, it soared to me. That's where yeah. the game soared, right? Above the rest, above the competition. Um, There's just there's not enough I could say about the presentation. Awesome game to look at, listen to. And just be a part of uh, a real experience that I'm glad yeah, that we awesome, were able to fun experience, especially to play with uh, a friend, family member. Uh, meh. It it almost makes me not want to like play with a significant other. For I some know, reason. right? The game almost so makes me not want to. So many people that have brother. played with their significant other, and I'm just like, all right, yeah, maybe if you're if you're secure, if your relationship is very secure. Go right. If you're, if you're having issues in your relationship right now, this is not the one that we're going to recommend. But right. otherwise, this is not a game that could like potentially strengthen the a bond between <laughs> you and your significant other. How about y'all just do go something to else? Go to counseling. Right. Go to counseling. Do I don't think, do anything I don't think that y'all relationship is going to survive the cutie incident. Right. So just go to counseling, guys. All right. Um, I appreciate you, Evo, for being here. I'm definitely gonna recommend the game. How about yourself? I'll definitely, I'll definitely recommend it for the oh, price yeah. point for and even going to uh, what, what was it? The can you explain the the Xbox the game share? Yes, yes. I felt so, like uh, that the way that you can purchase the game, you play the you pay forty dollars for the game. Uh, one person pays forty dollars for the game. The person you want to play it with, they will go ahead and they will download the friend pass. And now you both have access to a almost triple A thirty, I mean thirteen hour game between two of you, guys. It's absolutely worth it. We absolutely recommend it. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming through, Evo, and doing this interview no with me. Thank you guys for coming through and watching the video. Uh, this is it takes two, but there will be more reviews coming in the near future. Ghost Runner, Apex Season 9, Knockout City is on its way, ladies and gentlemen. You know I'm excited for that. That's another EA title. I hear about that me, man. So, you guys, thank y'all for being here. Y'all know how this goes. It is me. It is me, Mr. EMP for I Make Plays TV, and we are signing out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.